In this video, I am going to show you how to raise your dominant vibration to attract love, money, career, whatever it is that you're looking for in life. Whether you realize it or not, your dominant vibration is controlling your life. We are energy beings and what we focus on reflects back to us. So whatever your dominant vibration is, is bringing a life to you. It's a reflection. It's a mirror reflection back at you. What's on the inside, what your beliefs are. And it's absolutely affecting your reality. I'm Carol Lee, and I am here to empower you to live a life that you fall in love with. Now, one thing I want you to understand is there are levels to your dominant vibration. I've been doing this for years, and it's unfolding for me in layers. Um, do you ever find yourself like you're doing everything that you've been taught to manifest? You're visualizing, you're meditating, you're manifesting, you're setting your intentions, you're journaling but yet you kind of keep just coming back to this one place. So today I'm going to teach you how to, the just key things to changing your dominant vibration. I did this years ago and I've been unfolding in layers. There's just layers to life and you are where you're at. And being okay with that and understanding that is essential. We just are where we're at and we're going to unfold and flow in layers and all of it is okay. You know, the art of allowing, uh, it just sometimes doesn't make sense to us because we want something so badly. But one thing I would like to remind you of is detaching. That is a big key to manifestation and growth is detaching from outcome and understanding it's not always going to unfold the way we think it is. It's likely going to be even better than we think it is. And I know that's hard to grasp at times, but that's the way it works. So letting go of that resistance is a huge part. There's a scale you can think of. You can think of, you know, you're just kind of suffering here. Then you're just getting by. And then you're in flow. <laughs> Flowing is that vortex. And then there's pure Tao. And then there's ultimate consciousness. So our dominant vibration is fluctuating in our lives between these points. Uh, I call it an ebb and flow of life. You're unraveling, you're unfolding, there's layers involved in growth and learning and development and attaining and just understanding that you're going to flow, you're going to fluctuate in these these vibrations and it's natural um, unless you're maybe Eckhart Tolle or Deepak Chopra. I, I'm sure even they have these fluctuations. Thing to think about that keeps us locked into a, a belief, uh, a vibration that we're in that may not be our dominant vibration is identifying with things. I do this today. It can be easier as you practice to recognize that it's happening and you can get out of it quicker the, the more practice that you do. But realizing that you might be identifying with something, for instance, let's say you are wanting to start your own company, your own business. You want to become an influencer on Instagram, but yet you'll try and then you just find yourself coming back to the nine to five job. Uh, you identify with 
this. You likely identify with this belief that you need a nine to five job to survive. I struggle with that as well. Um, it was ingrained in me as a child by my father that you are nothing if you aren't working and contributing. He doesn't see self-employment as something that is contributing to society. He, he has these beliefs and he identifies with them. And understandably, it has impacted my beliefs. However, I have come to discover that all these things that I was conditioned with as a child were what my parents believed. It was what my family believed or my friends. It doesn't make it true. It's a conditioning of society, of what's worked for their parents and what worked for them. And it's their beliefs. And it honestly does not have to be yours. You can change this. But if you are attached to it, you may not even know. For instance, I didn't even realize recently that I had a belief about money. <laughs> I had some sort of guilt about being of service to others and, and then charging for it which is absurd, but once I released that and let that go, I, I no longer am attached to that idea that was, I don't even know where it came from. I guess I made it up myself <laughs> that money is evil, which it's not. Money is energy. And if you look at it as an evil energy, then it isn't going to flow to you easily. So all these things that we can be identifying with is going to affect the outcome of For years. I had some sort of identity that I was not worthy, that I didn't value myself. It showed in the relationships that I was choosing. The men that I was choosing were very narcissist, narcissistic, which was understandable as you later figure out those traumas. I was raised in a very dysfunctional environment with a schizophrenic mom and a bipolar sister. These are very narcissistic behaviors in those mental diseases. So I was comfortable with that. And I didn't believe I had value because I was invisible growing up. Because of these limiting beliefs from those ideas of not feeling valued, not feeling worthy, it kept me in a certain, I guess, frequency you can call it. I like how Abraham Hicks relates our vibration and our energy to like a radio frequency. If you are wanting to listen to 101.3 FM, but you are on 102.1, you are not going to hear what's on the radio on 101.3. It's because that is the frequency that you have it on, so that is what you can listen to. So if you consider that in your vibration, which is a frequency, if you are letting off a frequency that you have no value and you know how you have no worth and your word means nothing and your feelings don't matter, that is what is going to attract to you. And it's fucking bullshit because your feelings matter. If anybody is making you, making you, if there is someone in your life who is not able to listen to you and who may be gaslighting you or stonewalling you, defensive, ignoring you. This is likely because of a belief that you have about yourself on the inside. And once you address that, it takes away its power. So when I was a little bit younger, what I would do with these things is use alcohol. Um, I would distract myself terribly with 
things that had no meaning. Uh, I was a binge drinker and I thought, oh, if I just drink a little bit, it'll take away this feeling. And the thing about that is it, it may take away a feeling for an evening, but then it's going to come back tenfold the next day. You, you've physically altered yourself. Now you need to recuperate. It's a depressant. Anyway, I've learned that alcohol just isn't a big thing in my life now. And it was because as I got older and as I began working on myself, I started to notice that if I drink alcohol, it affects me for three days, three days of life that I am not myself. I'm not feeling op optimal. I'm not feeling good. Anyway, I quickly began to notice that it's a mask. It's a cover up. It's not helping me in any way. So then I really began to seek the tools that were going to propel me to be in my fucking dominant vibration most of the time. And again, there's an ebb and fucking flow. Once I began to work on myself and meditate and address these false beliefs and work on my inner consciousness, I began to get more high vibe, be in the flow, and then really be in my fucking vortex most of the time, which is a better high than any alcohol or pot or anything that I've ever experienced. So one thing I want to just reiterate, yes, my vibration fluctuates, but for the most part, I am in high high vibing times. There are little fluctuations here and there, sometimes a big one. That's like once a year. Yesterday was one of those days for me. Like I just came back from a vacation. I had done like an 11 mile hike two days before that. My body was tired, recuperating. Like it just was kind of like a low vibration day for me, but I understood that. I really understood where all that was coming from. And those days are okay. You just don't want to fucking live there, which I don't live there anymore. And I understand when they're occurring that I am not going to fucking live there. I'm in a way better balance of being in my dominant vibration, doing what I love. Anyway, in this video, I am going to show you how to raise your dominant vibration and attract love, success, money to your life. But just generally speaking, for you to attract love, for you to attract money, for you to attract success, it's really about raising your level of consciousness. Key to doing this is really understanding what you identify with, how you see yourself, and your beliefs. Really understanding where you're at with that. So there are emotions that are on the lower vibration scale. You can say it starts with, you know, you're in that suffering. You could be afraid. You could be angry. You could be sad. You could be depressed. This could be something that was learned from childhood that you're identifying with, but really understanding what that is, where your emotions are, and if you're letting it fuel you. For instance, with me, I was raised in a very mentally ill household, and I was not heard. I was not listened to. No one asked me how I felt. My sister was a person that was always in some sort of dramatic event. She would come home wasted. She was suicidal. She was on drugs. She got caught up in older men. It was just always something and while she was going through that, my mom had severe mental illness. And 
It was also about her. She would collapse in the middle of the hallway and start crying. And I learned very young to be perfect. And I, it's interesting because I tell my kids about this is, was I perfect? No, but I appeared perfect to my parents and I did so on purpose. They were dealing with a lot and I didn't want to have them deal with any more. And I learned, I identified with being perfect. I kept my curfew. I was never late. I was contributing to cleaning the house. I just kept everything in order as much as possible and didn't bring it up to anyone. And I struggle with this coming back in areas of my life. And let me explain. I, I then went on to a relationship, a marriage for 20 years where I did everything. I pretty much raised my kids. I worked full time for a big part of our lives. I was the one who made more money. I went to college. I took care of my kids and that just a lot of it lied on my shoulders. And this person just did what they wanted to do majority of the time. And if you look at that, it's a pattern, but it was because I, I identified with that. I believed that that's what I was worth, is having a person that wasn't there and involved in my life and that couldn't listen to my feelings. They just weren't capable. And what you believe comes back to you. If you really evaluate this and really take a look about how you're identifying with what you identify with, and that could be worthiness, it can be depression, it can be anxiety, it can be, it can be an illness. Are you identifying with that? Is it becoming a part of you? And that is really a key to getting out of a lower vibration and moving up on the chart to letting go of sad, fear, depression, anxiety. And I'm not saying it won't ever happen to you. Don't live there. Don't identify with it because these things are not you. You are not sad. You are not invisible. You are not depressed. These may be feelings that are happening that you might be identifying with. I have someone in my life that constantly tells me they have anxiety. And I understand. I've been there. In my 20s, I started having panic attacks. And I was identifying with where I was, which was a a huge stress I was putting on myself to financially take care of two young kids and be a super mom and do everything that I was capable of doing at that time. And I began to overload. I identified with that area that I was at. We are not those things no matter what. If you have someone in your life who is unable to see you or hear you, I would just want you to think about, is this a pattern that keeps occurring in your life? And if it is, recognizing that you might be identifying as this person, the key to getting out of these bottom level vibration emotions is understanding that things don't happen to you, they happen for you. 
I have to remind myself of this sometimes, but I truly believe if something is presenting to you in your life, especially over and over again, that it is the universe's way of telling you, wake up. Wake up. And it seems for me in my instances that it just kept getting louder and louder and louder and louder. And as it got louder and louder and louder, it kept getting more intense. I think one of the hardest things to realize when you're in the depths of it is understanding that I know for me, in, in my case, um, I believe that each of these instances led to me having an awakening, becoming aware, and really working on having a higher consciousness and being raised with a, a very mentally ill mom and sister, and then being in that 20 year marriage, each of those things has propelled me to like, there was something inside of me that knew that I just wanted more. And I don't know, you can go back to some of my videos. I talk about this. I had during my marriage, I had a situation where I deeply desired connection, friendship, and I knew that there was more. And then one day I had a realization that if I wanted deeper connections, if I wanted true friendship and love and success and money in my life, it had to start with me. I needed to change who I was. And that has really altered my existence on this planet. It has altered what I allow in my life. It has altered the kind of friendships that I have. And let me tell you, I'd rather have zero friendships, zero people around me, then allow negativity, harm, disrespect. I just am not going to do it anymore. And one thing I want you to understand is you are in charge of your destiny. Don't let anybody tell you any different. If, if you feel you need to go a certain direction, that's up to you. It's not up to anybody else. And that really changed my fucking life. I started, I started researching, meditating. Uh, Deepak Chopra really was a huge part of my mindset shift. And gosh, it was probably 2000, early 2000s that I started listening to Deepak Chopra. Seven Spiritual Laws of Success utterly changed my fucking, like, it was like a kapow. Um, this stuff was way less available then. As I began changing these things, I learned how to navigate through, like, lower level vibration emotions. And I think once you have those tools and those skills to be able to Manipulate your, manipulate may not be a good word, but to be able to improve your mindset, you're less often in these lower vibration emotion categories and you know how to navigate them and you have the tools and the skills that you need to talk, like handle it, but also to be able to get out of it quickly and get into a more higher vibration feeling and emotion. Well, I really love Aaron Doty's ex um, 
analogy that he uses for your vibration. So you're either showing up as an extra in somebody else's movie, or you are the main fucking character in your movie. I think this is a huge, huge analogy because in all honesty, I used to be an extra in everybody else's movie. I had ways that I was like showing up in my life, but in relationships, I was definitely an extra in somebody else's movie. It's, it can be hard to fucking look at that. It can be a hard pill to fucking swallow when you realize that. But let me tell you, once you do, the sky is the fucking limit. Because what do you want? Do you want to be the main character in your own fucking movie that's going to create a life that you fucking love? Or do you want to be an extra in somebody else's movie? you're a star in your own movie, you're going to realize that things don't happen to you. They happen for you. So when you start to realize your life is unfolding for you and it's here to teach you things and keep you in a higher vibration, but if, if a lower feeling or emotion happens, you start to understand this is here to teach me something. It kind of lets you off the hook, right? It's, it can be hard at times when you're in that to go, what can I learn from this? What is this trying to tell me? It can be really fucking hard. But once you realize that, it, it's a whole nother level. Being in the cameo, being the extra in somebody else's movie, you're going around going, can I be in your movie? Can I be in your movie? Being super needy and maybe being rejected and letting that debilitate you. But you're here to be in your movie. And when we're the cameo in somebody else's movie, we're kind of just on autopilot, not even recognizing what we're capable of, not having empowerment and awareness and being awake and understanding that you fucking matter. You're lost in this societal idea and conditioning of not being aware that you're here to live a high vibe existence and you're not meant to follow everybody else. And you are here to be taught and learn how to navigate all these things. And you deserve to be a fucking main character. You, know, you deserve to be the star in your movie. One of the key ways to raise your dominant vibration is really to identify your core vibration, your purpose. Look at who the fuck you want to be, what drives you, what you're passionate about. I know for me, a long time, my passion has been fucking fitness. It drove me. It like fueled my fire, it empowered me. And this is gonna propel you when you find that thing that really like fuels you up, like to find your fucking purpose. And you can do that by evaluating how you fucking feel about it. What, like, just keep testing, testing things. It could be fitness, it could be cooking, it could be like, being of service to people, what fucking empowers you? Um, so really identifying your core vibration. You can even work on identifying who you are not. Um, this identifying your core vibration is really going to bring you to a sense of awareness about yourself. It's going to allow you to address these stories and these beliefs that, that you might have and really address them and change them. 
So the more you get to know yourself, the better it is going to like help you become aware and really be able to get rid of these beliefs that we're talking about, these stories that you may identify with. The next step is letting go of what isn't serving you. So really identifying these stories and then fucking getting them out of your life. It, it could be a belief that you have that you have to work a nine to five job, that you can't become an entrepreneur. You don't have the skills. You don't know enough. You can't be a famous YouTuber. Let that shit go because it is not serving you. It could even be that, oh, this is the same old type of relationship that I, this is what I deserve. This is what, this is the way it is. This is all there is. No, let go of those fucking ideas that aren't fucking serving you because it's a limiting belief and it's keeping you where the fuck you are. And I'm I'm like the perfect example of that, of once you let go of these ideas, your, your life really becomes limitless. You, believe me, there'll be beliefs that are, it's all part of these layers that I talk about that maybe come out later in life. Just like I was telling you, explaining that I had a belief about money that I didn't even realize was there. So as you grow and as you evolve, beliefs will come up, but it's where you're at, right? We are where we are. And understanding that and understanding that it's going to unravel in layers, but as they unravel, let that shit go. It's not serving you. It's not doing you any justice. If you are overweight and you're like, I could never work out. I could never be thin. It's a belief and it's, it's not true, but it's going to keep you there because you believe it. Uh, we are our own worst enemies, right? I mean, that saying is there for a reason. Did you know your reality is based on agreement? So if you don't agree with something, it doesn't become your reality. This is, like really mind blowing how simple, but how complicated this can be. So let's just say for an example, someone is like, oh my God, you're so annoying. And your laugh drives me insane. It's ridiculous. If you're like, oh my God, my, my laugh is loud. It's, it's driving this person crazy. And you start believing it. And then when you laugh in front of people, you're, you're like trying to change your laugh. But if initially you're like, fuck you, bro, I like my laugh. And you don't identify with that. If you don't agree with it, it will not become your reality. And let me tell you, I can actually relate with this one. My mom used to say to me as a kid, your voice is so loud. And sometimes she'd tell me it gets on her nerves. And I believed this to be true. And it's kind of a, impacted me a little bit throughout my life, but it doesn't anymore. I've let go of these limiting beliefs because let me tell you, a loud voice can come in handy in several instances. <laughs> you could be a cheerleader. You can be a leader. You can be someone that can be heard and listened to. So your reality is based on agreement. Remember that. It doesn't have to be part of your reality if you don't agree with it. So let go of this old shit that is not serving you. Okay, finally, live this. Practice it. Be here every fucking day. And what I mean by that is become this. Your dominant vibration is what you feel, what you think, and what you do. Live it. Practice it daily. Be here every day as often as fucking possible. 
This is the best thing that you can do to change your dominant vibration. This is what I do very first thing in the morning when I wake up. This is what I fucking do. I live it. I have a gratitude session. Being grateful is a huge part of manifesting, but also believing what you're grateful for, all that you have, that you are fucking waking up healthy, that you have a comfortable bed to sleep in, that you have a car that you get to drive that fucking takes you places, that you have a family that loves you. Whatever these things are, fucking live them, feel them, embody them, and then living like think feel do then i set intention for my day like my day is going to be fucking successful i'm going to get this 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 and this done and it's going to get me here 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 and here and then feel the fucking feelings of what it's like to be this person in your dominant vibration and i highly suggest this is what I do is I do a deep meditation. I try to do 20 minutes a day. And then when I'm in that meditative state afterwards, I, I am living the life that I want to manifest. I am feeling it. It's happening to me. It's here. It's real. And as much as you can do that throughout your fucking day, this is how you raise your fucking dominant vibration. So remember, you want to find, identify your core vibration. What fucking fires you up? What empowers you? Is it fitness? Is it being of service? Is it getting a new job that you fucking love? Is it working with animals? Whatever that fucking is for you. Then I want you to, I invite you to let go of the shit that isn't serving you. Let go of those feelings of inadequacy. It's okay to have fear, but let it go. Do it anyway. Face these things. Like I remember one time, one of my biggest problems was feeling stupid at the gym. I became a personal trainer and this, it's not even a feeling. And I feel for people who feel it because no one gives a shit what you're doing there. And if anything, most of the people would adore to help you. If you're struggling on a piece of equipment, they would happily come help you how to do an exercise. So that reality that I was creating for myself was fucking bullshit. Anyway, so Core vibration, identify your core vibration, let go of shit that isn't serving you, and then live there. Live it, be it, feel it, fucking do it every day. And this is how you're going to raise your dominant vibration and really get out of this place of struggle and move up that ladder to be in flow and after flow, <laughs> you know, you live in the Tao. I don't know if any of you have ever read the Tao, but I have Wayne Dyer's book and it, it's revolutionary how he really helps you switch your mindset about life. And he, anyway, I highly suggest that book. But then there is, you know, a level of consciousness that's up there with enlightenment and really living in your vortex, creating a life that you fall in fucking love with. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I would love to hear comments from you and just let me know what you think, if this was helpful what kind of videos you would like to hear about. Uh, I know that this is something that has transformed my fucking life. And I am literally living a life of my dreams. But not only that is I'm a passionate advocate for myself, for self-love and no more people pleasing and really living for me and understanding that that is okay, even if it hurts somebody else's feelings, which is not anything I would want to do, but I'm also okay if that happens, if I'm expressing myself with candor and kindness and doing all I can. 
I'm here to be of service and empower you to really see what the fuck you can do because you are capable of a life beyond your wildest dreams. And I want that for you. Anyway, thanks for joining me. You can check out my Instagram. Uh, I, I am a full-time life coach here to help and empower you. If you need one-on-one -on -one guidance, you can go check out my website at coachcarolee.com. Otherwise, I love having you here to my videos. And don't forget to comment and let me know what you thought. I love you guys. Bye.